Hello everyone. It's now 8.11 p.m. still on um, Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. <clears throat> so, excuse me. <coughs> so, hold up. Oh. I think I got it. Damn, I was flying that or something. Hold up, y'all. <clears throat> so, my throat is a little bit, you know, irritated right now. So, I'm letting y'all know that um, I did not foresee this coming. I did not. Because I was hoping that something could be worked out today. So... <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me I had a lot going on today too and everywhere I went they gang stalked me even worse even heavier but the good news is the good news is all three Uber rides that I had today none of them were perks and they were all nice. Somebody paid for my breakfast. And there was something else good that happened. I don't remember. <clears throat> that was I was so, there was something else good that happened that I didn't remember. But I forgot. Oh, and I got um a haircut. Another haircut. And I think you know the guy did such a great I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do do that over my eye. <clears throat> the guy did such a, um, you know, excellent job. I said, it's like the best haircut that I got in a while. He even complimented me saying that I had pretty hair and everything. So I want to try to let my hair grow back out, you know. But, you know, as I say, I'm starting to get kind of like, I'm 40 years old, so I think I'm starting to get like a little gray hair. You know, so I'm going to talk more in depth on in depth on my YouTube channel about, excuse me, about everything that happened. So I only got maybe like four hours of sleep between two and six. And after six o'clock, I don't think I was able to um, go back to sleep. Maybe between somewhere between six and eight, I don't remember how my sleep was, but I think I only got four hours of sleep last night, so I'm feeling heavy pressure on my heart and the sleep deprived feeling, <clears throat> you know. So at the meeting this morning, the um. The manager at the meeting, uh, Miss Shirley, is like when I dealt with workplace mobbing, homeless shelter bullying, or any other kinds, or even going to school, any kind of bullying or abuse that you have to deal with. Um, the so-called narcissist in authority. It's like they will sit there and. Um, sometimes like what the police officer did yesterday, she would not let me, um, say what I had to say. And she, for, she forced me to shut up and then she forced me to go back inside. So today, like, it's like, they'll let you speak. When you're speaking the truth, they'll let you speak. But then they got their minds made up to believe absolutely nothing you say. So, like, on the way to the meeting, after I went to eat breakfast, they had perps following me and beat me to the restaurant and gang stalking me at the multiple perps, gang stalking me, like, on the way to and from and 
at the restaurant and I mean the perps followed me on followed me on the bus and followed me to the to the restaurant and basically tried to beat me to the restaurant. So the perps I thought that they were um you know just other perps. I did not know that it was that Whitney Whitney Dennis perp that was the next door neighbor. Her and some other lady they hurry up and arrived just before I did for the meeting. I didn't know that that was them. I thought it was some other perps, like usual. And they were perps too and did that, you know, try to beat me to the office. And so I thought it was other perps that was just trying to follow me or trying to beat me to the office. I didn't know that was them. So the other lady, you know, the Whitney person, she, you know, the skank perp with the 666 kids, she must have smear campaign and told that lady about me. Because then the lady, the moment they pulled up and made sure that they arrived there before I did. And then the lady started bullying, harassing. The other lady got out the car and started bullying her, the SUV, started bullying, harassing, and threatening me. So, you know, at the office, the the manager, Miss um, Shirley, she was the one doing all the talking and playing all the psychological games, you know, intentionally and willfully throwing up satanic hand signs. When we first got into the meeting, I mean, they forced me to get rid of my cell phone. They forced both of us to um, put our cell phones at the front. But after they forced us to put our cell phone, I mean, up at the front desk, they recorded the meeting. And I'm like, this don't make no doggone sense. So everybody had on masks except me and Mr. Singh. And Miss Shirley was was doing the most of the talking, but her and Mr. Singh, they were playing all kinds of psychological games. And basically, you know, that Whitney person was trying to pretend to be a vic- pretend to be a victim and pretend that lied and said that I was the one bullying and harassing everybody in the neighborhood. So Miss Shirley was throwing up satanic hand signs and throw, I mean, playing all kinds of psychological games. And when we first got up in there, one of the first things the Whitney person, one of the first things she said is, she called me a gang stalker. So then they sat there and narcissistically demanded an answer for what is a gang stalker. At first I didn't want to say anything, but then I told them what it was, what, what gang stalker, what gang stalker program is. And then I encouraged them to look it up, up online. And then it, they said that they had no idea what gang stalking is. And they all said, claimed that they never heard of. It was like a few of the staff in the room. They all claimed that they didn't know what gang stalking was. But um, reverse psychology, psychological games, that's what the Shirley lady was playing. And I'm going to talk more about it on my YouTube channel. So I got all my stuff. Um, and then even when I went, I mean... I had basically had to throw throw away all my belongings and I had to get another backpack and like the stuff in the bag was too heavy. So now I'm kind of carrying two bags. So I'm back home with Sona Streets and I got a hotel for two nights. But after that, that's all I could afford with the money that I have. I can't afford no more nights. I got rid of the storage unit. All me trying to better myself and try to get housing. All this happened all at the last minute or within a couple of days, and I was unprepared. You know, I'm. I mean, I was supposed to be at that place right now with the rent paid. No rent paid. I had to turn in all the keys, get off the get the um, electricity bill turned off, cancel the. Ca- I mean, the internet service. I had to cancel and get done with with everything. So basically. They said I wasn't evicted, but they basically um, pretty much um, heavily convinced me that basically that I should move. And then they had their mind made up to believe that the Whitney perp was the victim and I was the, um, you know, the, the bad neighbor. They tried to narcissistically lecture me about being a bad neighbor and lecture me about how to be a good neighbor. And I mean, and so... After, I mean, I got 30 more seconds to talk. So, like, after um, I started, I was almost done cleaning my, clean, getting all my stuff out the um, apartment. The Whitney perp, she had, she had her son running around with um, red shorts on. And also there was that same lady from this morning that dropped Whitney off. Her and her daughter, they threatened me. So I got to go.